everyone I thought it might be really useful to do a video showing you how to create gold. I do have quite a few videos with gold items in and some where I've shown you but I produced this sheet quite recently which is available in my Kofi shop there'll be a link in the description showing you how to create um, gold with lots of different pencil sets it's a bit far away and small but I've included the Artex Arteza Expert Black Widow Spider, Karen Dash Pablo's, Castle Art Soft Touch, Castle Arts Gold, Derwent Chromaflow, Derwent Nightfast, Polychromos, Prismacolor, Stedler, um, and Tombow Erogiton. Um, I have a few other sets, but those I thought were probably the main ones, and that's all I could fit on the page. Although this is printed with blank at the bottom, I couldn't fit any more on the page when I uh, when I made it. It's a bit strange. But anyway. What I'm going to do is show you actually how to use this and then um, apply it to an actual picture because it's very different colouring within a little line than it is actually applying it to a picture so I thought that might be quite useful. Now I've got my polychromos um, so we're going to do that one but this technique that I'm going to show you will work for you, all your brands of pencils. I just happen to have polychromos um, available. Um, it's coming. We are going to do the polychromo slot just because that's what I've got. Now what I would advise is if you're just using one set and you want to um, practice with that set, use all of these slots just for your one set of pencils or play with them all and see which you like the best. There's lots of different ways but keep practicing because it does take a bit of time. So I'll show you the polychromos. What you do is you put lots of layers here on the end. So layer over again and again and then start to come across layering less. So you're fading the amount of colour like that. Okay, you do exactly the same on the other side. Now I find that I'm much better at doing this going from left to right than right to left. I have no idea why. Now if you find that's the case for you, I mean, I'm trying extra hard so it's hopefully it's not too bad. Um, when you come to actually colouring in your book you can always turn your page around and colour it the other way to do it the way that feels best for you. You can see they're not exactly even either so maybe I should just extend this one a bit like that. Now I take your second colour, in this case it's the raw umber and uh, do go right over the top of what you've done already. Okay. What that does is it fills in the gaps and I am still fading as I go. So I've put more layers here than here. Okay. Now when you're colouring with a really soft pencil like um, Prismacolor, you can use a different technique. You can actually drag the colour across a little bit um, because it moves on the paper. But this technique does work as well. So it might be easier just to use the one technique for all of them. This works for all your pencils. This is your green gold. Now we've only got one colour left now. So whatever you're colouring in, you need to think at this point, I need to leave space for my final colour, but I also need a little bit of white paper left in the middle. If you're not colouring on white paper, then you need to put that space in with a white pencil. But um, I'm sort of going to assume you are colouring on white paper because there aren't many colouring books that don't. And even if you're um, drawing or colour, you know, colouring something you've drawn, it's fairly likely that you've used white paper. And then the final colour, which is um, your cadmium yellow. Now I'm. You notice I'm going back over every layer. Now with, if you're using a soft pencil which isn't so transparent, such as the Prismacolors, you might find if you go over this too dark it will really fade it down. So you may have to be a little bit more careful with how you're layering up. Now when we get to this centre bit where there's a white bit, I've left quite a chunky space. It's actually not necessary to leave too much. You can bring it right in so there's only a little bit. It just needs to be a little glare that catches the eye. You can see that is a that one's a bit brighter than that one. Some people join it right up and don't leave white, but I feel the white makes a difference. This looks really different to this one. 
that's because this has been scanned and then printed so it did look like this <laughs> believe me it did so that that's why it looks a little bit different so yours might look more like mine than this version is because you know and of course your printer might print it slightly differently anyway so what I would do is this isn't easy I've demonstrated it fairly simply for myself I've been practicing a very very long time so you might want to pra keep practicing as I said if you're only using one set of pencils just fill all these lozenges up with with the same brand you don't have to sort search out all your pencils but if you've got I would say tr if you if you want to practice with hard and soft brands, you can use some po the harder brands would be your Polychromos, your Stedler, your Tombows, um, your Castle Art Soft Touch, Black Widows, and then your softer brands would be your Prisma and your Artex and your Arteza Experts and your Castle Arts Gold. It'd be a bit softer, so you might want to try and feel the difference you know and play around with those and of course you don't have to stick in the bar you can go above below it all around just keep practicing but that's all well and good doing it like that how many coloring pictures have a piece like that not many so we're going to try it on something a little bit more complicated to show you how to do it because what becomes tricky is when you have a page like this oops, sorry just switching over I just come out a little bit I'll just show you this page from Ivy and the Inky Butterfly. You have a page like this and you want to do it in gold. Where on earth do you start? Where do you put your light bits? Where do you put your dark bits? How do you pick? Well, we're going to do a little bit. I won't do the whole thing, um, but I will show you how to do some of it. We might do... Um, we'll start over here with this sort of complex bit here, look. Also quite difficult when you've got I talk you through, uh, say here, you've got this really long line going all the way through here to there. Okay, so how do you deal with that? Well, I would do my darkest bits. I would treat it like the line that we've just coloured. Dark at each end and then get lighter towards the middle. Okay, that's what I would do with the long line like that. But actually we've got a sort of twirly twiddly bit. What do we do then? Let's, let's come in and have a little look would deal with each bit so I always start with my darkest color and this is what I find to be the most difficult bit is sort of starting and working out where am I going to begin so there are some obvious bits for me which I'm going to show you so in here it's really dark where all these lines meet can you see so I think we can take advantage of that dark bit and put our gold the sort of darkest bit in here and then just fade it out like that okay and then we've got this sort of outside bit and these come to an end so I'm thinking we could either fade them to here yeah so make this the light bit on the ends or we could put a little bit of lighter bit in the middle so it looks like they shine in the center I think I'm going to fade them to the end Okay, so I might just expand that a little bit more as I've got a fair bit of room to get my colour all the way to the end. And then this bit I'm going to do differently. But what I would normally do on a picture is mark out all my dark brown first and then do my next colour. And I find that quicker. I'm going to do it a bit slower with you, so we won't do that. We'll move to our next brown. I'm just going to sharpen it, which is our... Um, in this case, it's the raw umber. This works with any of your pencil sets that we've demoed. I've just happened to be using my polychromos. So we go over the top of this, like, like we did before. And then just sort of overlap the end and then fade it down. Now when you're fading it, you can use the lighter touch as well as less layers. Like that. Now I've got my green gold. I'm doing the same thing again. So I'm thinking, like I said earlier, about making sure I leave enough space for my last colour and a bit of white at the tip. So here's my cadmium yellow. Sorry, cadmium yellow. Oh, it doesn't want to show up properly. 
Now I'm not going to go all the way to the end but I'm not going to leave a huge amount of white. We aren't going to get the same sort of shine effect that we did with our lozenge shape. It's not wasn't a lozenge with our, our our practice piece. But there is our beginning. However, these um, shapes overlap each other. So I'm using my burnt umber again to put in some shadow. So along here... I think this outside bit would create some shadow so I'm just putting a line in there and one in here one here like that and on the edge so we've got a slightly more three-dimensional look not hugely now this bit on the end I'm looking at the shape of it and I'm thinking in here I want a darker bit I want my lightest bit to be in the middle there so I'm colouring it completely independently of the last bit I'm not doing the thing which proper artists do and think about where the light is and what's going to be shiny not worrying about that I'm just treating each individual item one at a time trying to just create a little illusion with each one so you see this one I'm not fading it quite so much because we've got such a small area so I'm switching to green gold my pencils are running away down the desk see I'm making sure I leave enough space for my yellow and some white so here I am going to leave a little white bit of paper in the centre. Now our ivy book is cream, it's not white paper. So if you want to, you could use a white pencil in there to make it really white. But I think the contrast is enough without us having to worry about that. So there's that bit. Um, where should we go from here? We'll do a loopy bit. So we've got this loopy bit going around here. Yeah. So this one is quite straightforward, I think. We can start here with a dark bit. And I think, you know, it might be lightest there, so we'll put a dark bit here. So quite dark there. Start to fade like that. Grab our next, our, oh, I don't know what's happened to my voice. Our raw umber, <coughs> excuse me, and go up like this. Then our green gold. Now you don't have to go over all of it all the time if it's a big area. You know, I'm sort of going over the whole thing with the green gold. Um, but I do find the very last pencil, the yellow, it really benefits from that going over because it brightens it a little bit. It might not be that visible. So I'm leaving a little gap there. And there's that bit done. This bit and this bit, I'm going to do the same as here. Yeah, and you can see it's virtually the same. And then we've got this bit looks the same as, as this sort of swirly bit here. So, but when we've got this curl here, that's a little bit tricky. What do we do with that? So let's have a look. Well, I'm going to start. Now I've done this one dark. Every time I get one of these, I'm going to do them dark so it matches. So that's dark. However... So here we'll start dark too. But where are we going to end it? We're going to end it here probably where it meets here. Like that. So we need to think about this bit. It's going to join here. We'll probably get our whitest bit here. So it's going to join here when in a green gold probably. Yeah. So we need to make this go to green gold. We won't get have a shiny bit in here. So we'll take that down a little bit. Then we'll take our um, raw umber and we'll extend that up a bit and this one up a bit. Like that. And then this one quite a lot so it can join in with the green gold when that comes in there. So here's the green gold. And it's going to take it
almost all the way like that and then our final cadmium yellow now i do have a tutorial already on how to do stars these are quite small so they're going to be quite tricky to do and these dots i mean they're too small to do four colors in um what i would be tempted is in the polychromos the green gold looks quite gold anyway without um, adding any other color hence the name green gold you could just use the green gold in the dots i think i will and it looks fairly they look fairly gold you see the stars because although i say i've got a tutorial for stars i'll just show you this one which is this, yeah this is probably the smallest now what I do is just do the tiniest bit in the tip then our raw umber my pencils are rolling like that and you just have to think about let's sharpen the gold green gold the amount of space that you've got and how much you need to fill it it takes practice and if you mess it up it's okay you know I know people get a bit worried about messing up their pages and things but I absolutely love looking back on my old colouring books and seeing how I've improved and changed you know and how I sometimes I look back and think oh I don't do some so and so like that anymore I'm still leaving a little white gap in the middle you know thinking I don't do that like that anymore I'm going to go back and do that again you know and things like that as well so it's not just about improving it's about evolving okay now let's have a look at what else we can do um i think it's all quite similar so say that's like that um see this bit here similar to this bit here what about this bit here well i would probably do that the same as that yeah to sort of match it up um, so I think that's probably all everything really on this page. I think you'd be now equipped to finish it. And so it can still feel quite scary. But once you've laid down your darkest colour, then it becomes really simple. Because you've marked all your first start and you then just extend that colour. So once I've decided that that is going to be my darkest bit and this we've already made the decision that those are all going to be dark we could go through them all and this is going to be our dark part there yeah and here then we've done the hard work all we need to do is extend them yeah the, it's only these and i'm thinking what should i do with these i'm th i think i'll do them like this because i'm going to start here with my dark color so i can creep that up there this one, no, it'll be our slightly lighter colour, but I think we can get away with it. I'll show you. See, these are different because we've got a line across the bottom. In fact, we can pretend this has. We can just put a dark in there. And then when we go for our raw umber, we just start extending that up, extending that across, and just and that one. And there, and there, and so it's really easy once you have know where you're going, you can just extend it with your next colour. So it's just, it's just really that first step getting started. I mean, that's going to join to there, which I haven't uncoloured in yet. Um, so once you're started, it becomes, see, that's going to join into that green gold. And then we've just got our yellow. So, yeah, as I say, once you've decided where your darkest areas are going to be, you can just go for it. This is a bit messy because I've been rushing. But there we go. So there it is. There you have it. Now, objects can be a little bit different, so let me just show you, in here we have a, um, whoops, um, here, 
so we have the goblet now if you wanted to do this in gold you could now what I would do with this was I would do that not do that gemstone in gold but do the rest and we've got these little circles here that I would do as gemstones and those teardrops and the rest I would do in gold so you start with your dark brown here on both oh, sorry my things in the way so you do both start both edges and the bottom all in your darkest colour fade it in start your next colour your next colour and your next colour so you've got your light you've got a little bit of white down the middle and you can find exactly the middle because of the centre of the gemstone so you can do that leave a little bit but then you've got all this intricate detailing all you need to do is get your burnt umber or you can go for a slightly darker colour like your dark sepia and put a bit of shadow around these bits under here things and around these so that it looks like they're standing out and that can give the impression that this is um, a sort of knobbly texture with all these bits sticking out from the background and uh, it's quite a simple there are harder ways to do it that look better but that's I find that's quite effective enough um, and if you go all the way around the edge of this um, center piece here you can make this outside rim look like it stands out and then once you do your gemstone if you make it look like it is if you make it dark around the edge and then lighter towards the middle you can make it look like it is standing out from your um, goblet so uh, that can be quite a fun one to do if you want me to do it as a as a um, tutorial I can um, I think it might be in the planner actually um, I think it's in this year's planner I'm sure I've seen it or have I done it already was it in last year's I don't know I'm trying to remember I'm flicking through the planner, having a quick look for you. No, I don't think, unless it's in April, I don't think it is. So, um, yeah, I could do it. I will double check that properly because I just got this feeling that's in here and I can't see it. So I might be wrong because I don't want to sort of do one and then do it again. Because um, it's a bit boring for you. But uh, anyway, but that's that. So that hopefully that will help you. But it is a matter of practice. Um, I used to find that every time I did metallics, I got a little bit worried. I would feel a bit, you know, I'm going to do it. I don't want to do it. And then as soon as I had um, marked out the uh, dark brown, I felt it was easy then and it was fine so hopefully you can do the same thing and it's just looking and seeing where am I going to put it down so here you've only got a very small area so just put a tiny bit in that space here you've got a longer area so you can put a bit there and a bit here you know and just work your way through it and if you start on a page that's got less I mean this page isn't particularly easy I would go for something in them small victories um, like um like I did here hang on let me just quickly show you sorry um like here where I did these little bonsai tree um trays they're quite straightforward you could practice that there's a video you would the videos already come out for these so you could practice those so that's a sort of a different type of thing um to do but like the goblet here like I was saying I've tried to make this look a little bit three-dimensional but uh, you can work a lot harder on that um, if you want to the goblet has a lot more detailing than this so uh, it'll take a bit longer but uh, that that's one to look for as well it's quite a recent one um, to uh, to do something slightly different but uh, I'm gonna leave that for now and as I say this chart is available but if you've got different sets of pencils and you want to know which colours to use now you use your dark brown a light brown a sort of ochre and then a yellow okay and you can experiment now different combos like this isn't the right combo for polychromos there are lots of different ones and I've actually got another sheet which I haven't printed out 
for specifically for metallic combinations with polychromos and I've got lots of different ones so different sort of more coppery more bronzy more antique gold um, silvers and a few coloured metallics as well so there are lots of different combos that you can use so you don't have to stick with exactly the one that I've written here I've just done it so that if you want to try it you've got some a sort of full safe way of just foolproof way of just doing it and you know that it's going to work but it is fun to experiment but while you're learning you can just use this as your guide but if you've got a different set of pencils and you don't know which ones to use let me know in the comments I may not have those pencils but I might be able to look them up and give you a few things to try even if I haven't tried them myself so I can help you so do please comment and uh, if you need some help but I hope that's been uh, I hope that's been useful for you so we've got our um, our um, little um, picture there and I'm going to finish that um, at some point I'm in the middle of something else as well so that's going to be fun I will have now have two um, work in progress to finish but I'll finish it and I'll uh, I'll pop a picture up for you um, somewhere, <laughs> somewhere, so that you can see it and see what you think and uh, and whether you like it. But uh, that's me for now. So thank you for watching. As I say, ask all the questions you've got in the comments. If it's I wasn't clear, if you want me to try it, do it again on something else. If you want silvers, if you want different metallics, if you want different colour combos, just let me know. I'm always willing to help. So um, yeah, I'll put the link for this sheet and the uh, and the poly metallic one in the um, in the description. Um, you do have to go to my Kofi shop to download it, but it is free. Um, you can you can pay a donation if you wish, but you can just put a zero in the um, amount you want to pay, and it's free for everyone. You know, it's just something I wanted to do to help everyone. So thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a really really super day and happy coloring. <laughs>